Well, good morning and welcome to the First Baptist Church. We are so glad that you tuned in and so glad that you allowed us to bring God's house to your house. That's right. We're here and we're thanking God once again for another wonderful Sunday morning. As we continue in the sermon series, it's time to make the turn. I'm thankful today for the preachers who have come before me. I'm thankful for Reverend Kenya Gray, Reverend Nyron Hawkins, and Reverend Craig Freeman. And I'm thankful that they have allowed this sermon series to flow in and through them. Now I want you to gather your family, gather your friends, text somebody, tweet somebody, tell somebody, First Baptist Church is coming to you live right now. Come on, First Baptist family and friends, visitors, wherever you are, let's get ready to bless the name. of his name.
Here is what we know now. The coronavirus is still among us. And as a matter of fact, on this week, we did see several days that had cases that were in the high 100s and even some days where we saw over 200 and possibly 347 cases a few days ago. So we still want to encourage everyone to be safe. Practice social distancing. Continue to wash your hands. Continue to wear your mask and stay six feet apart. And by all means, pray every day. We recognize that the flu season is now upon us and many people will have fall allergies, which can sometimes mirror or reflect some of the same symptoms as the virus. So it is so important that we cover ourselves when going in and out of the house, take our medications and keep ourselves as healthy as possible to fight this virus so that we can return to worship in the days that lie ahead. tomorrow and here's what's going on at the broad make sure you join us each tuesday at 6 p.m for bible study via facebook or our website www.fbcbroad.org do you have a prayer request well we want to pray with you you can contact us by sending an email to congregational care at fbcbroad.org or you can reach us by phone at 901-901 323-2429, extension 315. Stay connected with your church family by subscribing to the First Baptist Church Broad YouTube page and by following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you would like a copy of this service in its entirety, you can email info at fbcbroad.org or call 901-791-0198. The You Are Not Alone Ministry presents No Story Goes Untold. This virtual experience will give you a chance to memorialize your loved ones and provide an opportunity to celebrate your recovery from addiction. If you desire more information and are interested in participating, please contact Congregational Care at 901-323-2429, extension 315, or email Congregational Care at fbcbroad.org. Please provide first and last name, a valid number, and the best time to call. Spaces are limited. FBC, the trunk has closed on our upcoming trunk or treat event. The Shelby County Health Department released guidelines on the fall festival celebration. In an effort to keep everyone safe, it is recommended not to trick or treat nor trunk or treat. This release comes just as health officials said recent data trends indicate that Shelby County is experiencing its fall wave of COVID-19. If you decide to do something, please be safe and keep listening for engaging opportunities on the broad. Calling all breast cancer survivors. It's time to show off your hope in your fight. To show our support for the pink, we want to honor you as a part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Please send your pictures to info at fbcbroad.org by October 22nd. Don't forget to subscribe to the First Baptist Church Broad podcast found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Hey, First Baptist Sunday School lovers. This is Dr. Pam Addison inviting you to our co-ed traditional Sunday school class. Come study with us via Zoom each Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. We look forward to seeing you. Were you born between the years 1980 and 2000? Do you lack a sense of direction for your life and you're trying to make the turn? Are you drowning in student loan debt from a college education that didn't guarantee you a job? Feeling stuck between being grown but not really? If that's you, find your tribe with 2030, a ministry for all grownish 20 to 30 year olds. Hi, this is Sheena Freeman and this is your mobile giving guide. Here at First Baptist Church Broad, we have four methods of giving. Cash App, PayPal, Text to Give, and Mail In. To give via Cash App, type in dollar sign First Baptist Broad. Make sure you don't forget to put your name in the four line. 
For PayPal, type www.paypal.me slash First Baptist Broad. For text to give, text give to 901-602-4241. If you would like to mail your tithes and offering in, you can mail them to 2835 Broad Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, 38112. I'm Sheena Freeman, and this has been your mobile giving guide. Come on and bounce with me like this. Come on. Can you bounce with me? Hello, this is Miss Kendra reporting live from First Baptist Church Broad with a message from the Lord. God is light, and there isn't any darkness in him. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. It's hard to see in the dark. If you're in a dark room, you want to turn the lights on. If it's dark outside, you want to carry a flashlight. If a storm knocks out the power at your house, you want to burn candles or a lantern to be able to see. Being in the dark can be dangerous. If you can't see, it's easy to trip and fall or bump into things. And you can imagine what it could be like if cars didn't have headlights. Drivers couldn't see where they were going and might crash into other cars or trees or buildings. Sin is a kind of darkness. When we choose to do wrong, it's like bringing darkness into our lives. It's a dangerous way to live and bad things can happen. But the Bible tells us that God is light. When we believe in God and learn how he wants us to live, it's like turning all the lights on. God helps us to see what is right and wrong. He helps us to see how much he loves us and cares for us. He helps us see all the things that can hurt us. Sometimes life's circumstances make us believe that our light is flickering, dim or is completely out well here's some food for thought with God there is no darkness God not only gives us light he is the light and God's light never goes out until next time keep the lights on Hey everybody, my name is Jeremy Sager. And I'm Sequoia Gray. And we are excited to launch the Educator Support Ministry here at First, First Baptist, Baptist Broad. Broad. Woo! Yeah. All right. So Jeremy, what is the Educator Support Ministry? Great question, Sequoia. So the Educator Support Ministry is an opportunity for all educators to come together in a safe space to just share ideas, to share concerns, successes and triumphs about supporting our students in this remote learning environment. Exactly. And we also want to provide you with health awareness to show you why we still believe that our children and educators are still safer at home. So when is that meeting? Wednesday, October 21st at 5.30 p.m. Via Zoom. Yes, so we hope to see you there. Zoom, Zoom. 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 Good morning, First Baptist. It's prayer time. Let us bow our heads. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. For your name is above every name. And it is in your precious name that we come to your throne of grace with thanksgiving in our hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you have kept us thus far. Despite all the chaos, calamity, and confusion, you have kept us. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to keep us. We ask that you comfort us and cover us. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you also protect us. For we are living in a time when there are protests, there's police brutality, we're battling a pandemic and we need your protection. Dear Heavenly Father, we send out a special prayer for all the essential workers out there. Doctors, nurses, 
their support staff, cashiers, truck drivers, those that are on the front line. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you cover them and keep them during this time. We ask that you guard their hearts and their minds so that they can focus on the task at hand. Dear Heavenly Father, continue to bless the work of their hands. Lord, we send a special prayer to teachers and educators. Cover and keep them during this time. Dear Heavenly Father, allow them to stay focused on the task at hand, which is teaching, educating, and training our children. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the parents that are navigating a new normal, and they too are learning alongside with their children. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to cover and keep our children guard their hearts and their minds during this time and give them a peace that surpasses all understanding so their hearts and their moldable minds are able to stay focused on their schoolwork. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to bless the pastor and the parishioners of this church, this great assembly. We thank you for allowing us to continue to worship and be connected. For we know that even though we cannot meet in the building that we call church, we are still able to connect as the body of Christ. For the church is not the building, but the church is within us. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to just go with us, stand by us, strengthen us where we're weak, heal us where we're hurting. And dear God, just fortify our faith so that we can stay in this fight. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. As we continue in the sermon series, it's time to make the turn. I invite you to John chapter 6, verse number 66. You can read many of those passages. There's a lot more there that you can read and get a full context, but for this sermonic uh, presentation, let me just deal with one verse. Here is what that verse says. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. I want to talk this morning from this thought for just a few moments Winning without a crowd. How do you continue when the crowd turns away? How do you continue when the crowd is not there? Pray with me on this thought as the Lord illuminates that you can win without a crowd. It's a very simple song. It's a worship that we offer to God. And I just ask, wherever you are in the world right now, just tap into him and know that he is your strength. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. Reaches to me. Oh, you are my strength. Hallelujah, Jesus. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. 
everybody say you are my strength wherever you are right now just know strength like no it's the only thing that can get you through get you over strength like no it's the only one that loves you unconditionally reach and he reaches to me one more time you are my strength you are my Strength like no other. Strength like no other. And he reaches, he reaches, he reaches. Reaches me. Oh, in the fullness. In the fullness of oh, this grace. In the power. In the power of his holy name. over the building. It lifts you up. You lift me up. In the fullness, in the fullness, in the fullness of, of your grace. grace. We don't deserve it, but in the power, in the power of your name, it lifts you me lift up. me up. I thank you, Jesus. You lift Everybody sing that. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. He knows everything you've been through. He reaches me. But he never puts more on us than we can bear. Hallelujah. Reaches, reaches me. It doesn't matter where you are, he reaches for reaches you. Reaches
We play games, and the NBA has just recently celebrated another championship. The Los Angeles Lakers, as a matter of fact, celebrated championship number 17. That's right. It was a record-tying championship on this past Sunday. And although they did it in a bubble, in an arena without fans, the crowds gathered outside of the Staples Center and they celebrated as if it had happened right there in their presence. But I recall it was March 7th of this year, shortly after the pandemic began to unfold in the United States, and on the exact day that it came to our county in Shelby, our city of Memphis, March 7th is when LeBron James, the MVP of this series, said, I am not playing without a crowd. He said the NBA is about fans. It's about playing for your teammates. And it's about playing for the people in the stands. He said you cannot have any more games without a crowd. But somewhere between March 7th and last Sunday, LeBron James, who is unknown, is probably one of the best players of our time, has come to find out that you can play and even win without a crowd. There's something about us. We love crowds, whether it's a protest, a parade, or a sports event. We recognize that crowds drive us, and crowds make us do just a little bit more. That's right. When we even go to church, we love it when the building is crowded. But I need to tell you something. There are some of us who've learned, especially during this pandemic time, that you've got to learn how to continue even when there's no crowd around. You've got to learn how to keep on going and keep on moving even when the crowds turn away. Now, I know before I get too deep in the message, I need to share it with you that we've all experienced that letdown of when crowds have turned away away from us. Moments of our popularity, moments of our likability, moments of being liked on Facebook and appreciated on social media and in the social space that's there. We love it when the crowd engages with us. But every now and then in your life, you're going to find yourself in the same predicament as the Savior found himself in John chapter 6, learning how to win and continue without a crowd. You've got to find something on the inside. You've got to find that inward tenacity in order to keep on going. Because if you don't, the crowds will dictate your future. I like that because so many of us have had to learn how to press our way even when the crowds walked away. That's good because what happens to us is that we have to realize that we're fighting for something bigger and better than the folk around us. They can appreciate us as long as we're winning and as long as we're on top. But oh, when the crowds walk away, do you have what it takes to keep on going? I wish I could get somebody to tweet that, to text that, to send it to somebody and said, I've had to learn how to walk without a crowd. Here it is. It's in John chapter 6. Six of John's gospel, Jesus says to his disciples, he realized that what he was saying to them was hard. It was tough. He had begun to say to them the things that would happen in the future. And as long as everything was going rosy and right, the crowd was always there. Oh, but I need to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you start giving folk the real truth, the, un the uncut truth, the, the stuff that you don't really water down, crowds will turn away. When you start saying hard stuff, when you start saying real stuff, when you start saying things that get on people's nerves, I got to stop right there because what happens to us is we're so crowd centric. We are so crowd filtered that we love to have the popularity of the crowd. One psychologist actually writes about it and she calls it a contagious euphoria. And she says this collective effervescence gathers around us and gives us this bubbly feeling on the inside. That's what effervescence is. It's that feeling that you look at and you get when you take an alpha seltzer when you drop something in and it begins to bubble up. You begin to say, here it is. It's wonderful. It's the champagne life, if you will. It's a collective effervescence. It is a good feeling on the inside where we're warm and fuzzy. But when the crowd leaves us, we don't have that effervescence anymore. Come real close to me. I need to tell somebody in here, 
when you are with the master, that ought to be effervescence enough right there. You got to know that what you have in Jesus Christ is enough all by itself. Here it is. Jesus is saying to the disciples after the crowd leaves, he said, will you also leave me? He said, are you also going to turn away? And what he's asking them is that, do you have what it takes on the inside to continue without a crowd? That makes me happy right there because there are some of us right now that we've been doing what we had to do without a crowd even in the room. Lord, help me in here. I love the fact that I get to preach anyhow without a crowd in the room. I love the fact that the staff of First Baptist Church gets to serve anyway without a crowd in the house. Is there anybody in here that has found some inward tenacity in your life and you found out how to continue even without a crowd? Yeah, that's what this is about because here it is very clearly in the text if you read it. There are those who have been with Jesus as long as he was doing stuff for him. Lord, help me in this house. As long as he was in John's gospel, chapter 6, feeding 5,000, there was always a crowd. As long as he was walking on water, there was always a crowd. As long as he was proclaiming that he was the bread of life, there was always a crowd. As long as he was saying, these are the words of eternal life, oh, there was always a crowd. But when he told them, you're going to have to go through some stuff in your life and deal with some things in your life, the crowd started backing up from him. I know, I know y'all ain't never had no folk like that, but can I tell you, if you come real close to me, you will live to see the day that you are not as popular as you were the day before. But if you believe in the word of God and you do what the word of God says, you can continue without a crowd. Yeah, I watched it. I watched the game. I watched it last week. And, and, and somewhere in the process of March 7th, when LeBron said he wasn't going to play without a crowd, I watched him play without a crowd. Uh, tell, I asked somebody what happened in the middle. What happened in the middle? Well, here's what I believe. Here's what I believe. I believe that, that, that LeBron had a Peter moment in his life. Uh -huh. uh, there, there was a time when you have to come into contact with your own self and you have to ask yourself some questions. And here's what Jesus says. He says to Peter, he said uh, to the disciples, he said, uh, do you want to go away as well? Uh, the crowd ain't here no more. Uh, everybody is leaving. People have turned and gone in the other direction. He said, what you're going to do? What are you going to do right now? Go ahead, ask somebody, text somebody, text somebody uh, tweet somebody, just call two or three friends and say, what are you going to do at this moment in your life? It has gotten hard on your job. It has gotten tough at your house. The thing that you had that bubbly collective effervescence about, it ain't there no more. The car ain't new no more. The house ain't new no more. But do you still love it as much as you did? on the day you got it. The relationship is not new any longer. The friends are not calling you as much as they used to. You ain't going to church every Sunday, but are you still serving the Lord right where you are? I wish I had somebody in here today that can say I'm still as excited about Jesus today as I was when we last had church in March. Here's the text. He asked Peter this pivotal question. He said, Peter, I ain't worried about the crowd. I ain't worried about the crowd. I ain't worried about the crowd. I, I, I ain't worried about the crowd. Touch, touch, just tell somebody, text them, tell them. I ain't worried about the crowd. He knew. He knew they were going to turn back. But here's what he says to the disciples. He said, do you want to go back? Will you turn as well? Huh, here's where the text gets good for me. Uh, because at this point, when one makes up their mind, uh, the rest of the team has to make up their mind to go with them. Now, I like this because if I could say uh, in my own uh, sanctified imagination, this is when uh, the coach says, LeBron, uh, are you going to go away as well? And LeBron has figured it out by now later on in the game. Tell somebody you'll figure it out later on in the game. Uh, he figured it out and he said, well, where are we going to go? 
In other words, this is all I really do, and you're the one who taught me how to do it. I like this because what do you do when you don't do all that you've been trained to do and there's nothing else to do? You'll catch that in a second. See, when you don't have anything else to do, you better make it do what it do. In other words, LeBron said, all I am is a basketball player. Peter said, all I am is a fisher of men. In other words, I got to stay with you because everything I am is what you made me. I cannot go back. I cannot turn around. I cannot go back to what I used to do. And I don't have to have a crowd in order to do it. I can still teach the word of God. I can still sing songs of Zion. I can still preach the word of God. I can still pray for sick folk over the phone. I can pray without them being in the room. I am doing what the Lord called me to do because it's in my heart to do it. Here's what he says. He says, I believe in where I am. What do you mean, Peter? He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? In other words, it's not about the place of the church. It's not about the building. It's not about the crowd. It's not about the location. But I believe in the where of where we are. Uh, I know that's going to mess with some folk. What are you saying, Pastor? See, the where of where you are is not about the location physically or the building. It's about what it's really all about. Peter knew he was with the Lord. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Somebody will catch that in a moment. See, I can be happy in church. Thank God for that. But I can also be happy at the house. Thank God for that. But when I think of God's goodness, no matter where I am, tell somebody, it starts all over again. I can be happy on a job where don't nobody like me because I'm not happy about the job. I'm happy that God sees fit to give me a job. I can be happy in a house where things are not working well. Why? Because he put a roof over my head. I can be happy at any place where he's putting food on the table because I know he's providing for me. I'm not happy about location. I'm happy about the God that brought me where I am. He says, you. He said, where am I going to go? He's saying, where am I going to go? I don't even fit in with the crowds that I used to run with no more. I, I know, I know some of y'all can't say that. I'm Y'all glad you're not at church right now, but uh, go ahead and tell somebody, I don't even fit in with the folk I used to run with. Uh-huh. I, I don't even fit in. Matter of fact, if I showed up, they're going to say, what are you doing here? If they still there, they're going to say, what are you doing here? Because you don't even have those clothes no more. Y'all will catch that in just a minute. Uh, you don't even wear your hair like that no more. Lord, help me in here. Matter of fact, if you pulled out some pictures of you about 10 or 15 years ago, even your children may not recognize you. Go ahead and get them out real quick. Here's the point. He's saying, I'm finding peace in your presence, and it is better than anything I had before. Ah, oh, I don't need a crowd for that. I don't need a crowd for that. I like this. Peter says, we believe in the where of where we are. Oh, but I like something else that Peter says. Jesus said, do you want to go away? Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? Not to where, but to whom? I'm with you. I can't find anything better than this. But then he goes on to say, you have the words of eternal life. In other words, we believe in the what of what you say. Uh, we believe in eternal life because you have told us about it. The words that you speak gives me hope for life and points to an eternity with God. It's better than anything I've ever had before in my life. Now, I know some of y'all that's done had some nice stuff. You've been to some nice places. You know some nice people, and you've done some nice things. Go ahead and type nice right there. But that ain't got nothing on what the Lord has in store for you. Eyes have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for them that love him. I like it. He's saying, I believe in the what of what you say. I don't just believe in the where of where we are. I believe in the what of what you say. I believe in your word. Oh, I believe in the word of God so much so that I'd risk my whole life on it. I believe in the word of God so deeply 
that anything the Lord has said, it's all right and it settles it with me. I cannot always see it in my natural eye. I cannot always comprehend it in my thought life. Matter of fact, his thoughts are so much higher than my thoughts. I can't always see it. But because I can trace it back to his word and know that God loves me and he thinks good thoughts towards me, Jeremiah 29 says, and he intends a good life for me. I just believe in what the Lord said. It don't always look like it from where I'm standing. Lord, help me in this house. I'm about to preach myself into happiness, but because I have had to hold on and believe in the word of God, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to the word of God. He said, with thy word, I've hidden it in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hold on to the word when you can't hold on to nothing else. He says, it's your word that causes us to stay. Uh, if it was church uh, that caused us to stay, many of us would have been gone a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, this pandemic would have pushed you away. It would have worn you out because you can't get to your building, in your seat, at your church. You would have been gone by now. Tell, just tell somebody, I would have been gone by now. But you realized it was something greater than just where you were going and what was being said by the preacher. You realized that you believed you were in the presence of the Lord and his word was true. Well, I got to go, but Jesus, Peter said one more thing in this text. He says, Lord, to whom shall we go? What, what, you know, whom, where, what, we don't have anywhere else to go. Um, he said, you have the words of eternal life, but watch this. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Christ, the Holy One of God. That, that did it for me right there. That did it for me right there. Because I start thinking again back to March 7th when LeBron was talking about uh, 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 not playing basketball. And then somewhere between March 7th and last Sunday, he forgot completely about the fact that he said, I'm not going to play if there's not a crowd around. See, there comes a point in your life when something happens on the inside of you and you realize you don't really need a crowd to get up and keep on going. Some of y'all got up on Sunday morning and you used to do this with a whole lot of people gathered around the television. You used to do it with a whole lot of people on your way to church. But some of y'all got up all by yourself and you're sitting in the room all by yourself right now. And you're having just as much church today as you were having the Sunday before we left church back in February and early March. Here you are shouting all by yourself, singing all by yourself. And it is because you believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Savior of all. Well, why did they believe it? Peter was simply saying, look, the things that you have said and done have come to pass in my life, and I believe that it is true. I'm going to stop right there and let y'all praise him right there, because some of y'all got enough evidence in your own home. You God is sitting around you right now. You can touch your own body. You can touch your own mind and realize that God has done great things in your life and you got enough evidence to believe he is the Christ. And it didn't take a crowd to convince you of that. You see, what it boiled down to, I'm done. What it boiled down to was a personal experience with the Lord. That's what it was. Peter made a proclamation that the crowd could not confirm. You see, don't nobody know if you love the Lord and you're saved and born again, but you and God. Peter said it right here. Where am I going to go? You've given me the words that turned my life around. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe there are some people who are listening right now that somewhere between March and where we are now, your crowd has gotten real thin. Yeah, your crowd got thin because you can't club like you used to, so club closed. I mean, we just go to clubs because we like that collective effervescence. It's loud, you can't hear. The drinks cost as much as one bottle of what you're drinking in the store. Yeah, I know the price. Here's the reality. We go because of the crowd. Most of the time when people go to protest, they go 
because of the crowd. When people go to parades, they really go because of the crowd. And lest I say something that was a secret, a lot of time folk used to come to church just because of the crowd. But can I tell you something? When you're born again and God has been good to you, you really don't need no crowd to confirm that. You see, it was after the crowd had departed that Peter made his proclamation. He said, look here, you're the one. The word that you've given me has upheld me. It turned my life around. It changed me. You are the one. I believe in what you say because I see the evidence of what you've done. You are the one that when I'm in your presence, not whom but where I'm with, with you, when I'm in your presence, everything is all right and you are everywhere. I want you to give your life to Christ today. And I want you to be able to say, I joined church without a crowd. That's right. I gave my life to Christ. I didn't walk down the aisle. <laughs> I, I didn't, I, nobody saw it. I gave my life to Christ, and there was no crowd around. See, what we're used to seeing in churches, and when somebody gets up and walks down the aisle, everybody applauds, and oh, what a wonderful feeling. But can I tell you something? It's wonderful without a crowd. I love coming to share the word of God because the word is true. And I believe in the word. I don't know if you're saying amen or not at the house. I really can't tell. I really don't know. But can I tell you, the joy that I have in sharing the word is about the power of what I know the word can do. I'm thankful to God that as I signed off on new member certificates over the past few weeks, I'm signing off on more new member certificates in a pandemic than I ever thought was possible. Why? Because people are giving their life to Christ even without a crowd. Can I encourage somebody on today? You can win without a crowd. The Lakers proved that last week. The juxtaposition, the irony of this to me was, while the Lakers were in the bubble celebrating without a crowd, the crowd had gathered over a thousand miles away celebrating and dancing in the streets. You don't know it, but can I tell you something, the real parallel that I saw when I was watching that? The Bible reminds us that when one soul comes to Christ, the angels in heaven rejoice. God Almighty, when you type your name in the computer and when you email and call and say you want to be saved in Jesus Christ, maybe nobody's in your house and nobody's at church to be assured of it, but there's a crowd in heaven celebrating your salvation. They're dancing in the streets over one who comes to Christ. Listen, I want to be your pastor. I want you to win without a crowd. I want you to win on your job without a crowd. I'm about to pray for you. I want you to win when you walk in the building and nobody celebrates you being there. I want you to win when they give everybody else a card on their birthday and they don't give you nothing. I want you to win without a crowd. I want you to win when the family events are going on and they say, oops, I forgot to tell you. You can win without the crowd. Father, in the name of Jesus, show us how to win when the crowd turns away. Show us how to continue when people don't celebrate our coming. Show us how to keep on going, dear God, and how to prevail and how to persist and how to persevere even when it gets rough. Thank you, God, for the example of the Los Angeles Lakers that in the beginning, they didn't think it was worthy of doing because there would be no crowd around. But in the end, they found a way to win, even without a crowd. I believe that's a lesson for some Laker fan, some young man, some young woman, some other man or woman, middle stages of life. I believe that's a lesson that you can win without a crowd. You can still accomplish the goals 
of life by giving your life to Christ and becoming all that he would have you to be, even without a crowd. Family is not there. Friends are not there. Nobody celebrates you yet. But can I remind you that there's a celebration in heaven going on in your honor just because you made the decision to give your life to Christ. As a matter of fact, if you're watching us, I want you to just text that or type that or tweet that I made the choice to win without the crowd. And I promise you, everybody's going to like it and love it and they're going to say, wow, you are a true winner because you did it without a crowd. We're celebrating you right now as you come to Jesus Christ, learning how to win without a crowd, learning how to continue even when the crowd turns away. Thank you, Jesus, for continuing to Calvary, even though the crowd had turned away. Receive this word into your heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Join us here next week at the First Baptist Church. We'll be right back here. You can also see us on Sunday mornings, WLMT Channel 30 in the Memphis area at 8 a.m. and then 10 a.m. on the social platform that you're watching right now. God bless you and God keep you. tomorrow and here's what's going on at the broad make sure you join us each tuesday at 6 p.m for bible study via facebook or our website www.fbcbroad.org do you have a prayer request well we want to pray with you you can contact us by sending an email to congregational care at fbcbroad.org or you can reach us by phone at 901-323-2429 extension 315. Stay connected with your church family by subscribing to the First Baptist Church Broad YouTube page and by following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you would like a copy of this service in its entirety, you can email info at fbcbroad.org or call 901-791-0198. The You Are Not Alone Ministry presents no story goes untold. This virtual experience will give you a chance to memorialize your loved ones and provide an opportunity to celebrate your recovery from addiction. If you desire more information and are interested in participating, please contact Congregational Care at 901-323-2429 extension 315 or email congregationalcare at fbcbroad.org. Please provide first and last name, a valid number, and the best time to call. Spaces are limited. FBC, the trunk has closed on our upcoming trunk or treat event. The Shelby County Health Department released guidelines on the fall festival celebration. In an effort to keep everyone safe, it is recommended not to trick or treat nor trunk or treat. This release comes just as health officials said recent data trends indicate that Shelby County is experiencing its fall wave of COVID-19. If you decide to do something, please be safe and keep listening for engaging opportunities on the broad. Calling all breast cancer survivors. It's time to show off your hope in your fight. To show our support for the pink, we want to honor you as a part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Please send your pictures to info at fbcbroad.org by October 22nd. Don't forget to subscribe to the First Baptist Church Broad podcast found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Hey, First Baptist Sunday School lovers. This is Dr. Pam Addison inviting you to our co-ed traditional Sunday school class. Come study with us via Zoom each Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. We look forward to seeing you. Were you born between the years 1980 and 2000? Do you lack a sense of direction for your life and you're trying to make the turn? Are you drowning in student loan debt from a college education that didn't guarantee you a job? 
feeling stuck between being grown but not really? If that's you, find your tribe with 2030, a ministry for all grownish 20 to 30 year olds. 